All right, before we get into this week's video, I need to know something. Um, let me know in the comments, what do you like best about our videos? Is it the woodworking part? Is it the business part? Is it just everything? Is it the, the final reveal of the projects at the end? I wanna hear what your favorite part or your favorite element of our videos is because we're balancing like six or seven priorities, right? We're balancing what the audience wants, we're balancing what the YouTube algorithm wants and what we have time to shoot and edit and things like that. I'd really like to hear your input. What is your favorite part of the videos that we do? Your feedback would be much appreciated. All right, hey guys, uh, sorry, it's been a couple weeks since we put a video out. <laughs> Just had a lot of life things going on. Uh, burnout is the end of the year, my mm -hmm. grandfather passed away, just a lot of stuff going on. We're back and ready to roll. So um, we are gonna, what have we been doing? Woodworking wise or life wise? Woodworking, Woodworking wise. wise. Okay. <laughs> so we got the CNC, we started putting it together. Yes. That thing is a nightmare to put together. It's just about done. We would just spend evenings on it. We just sit down there and Lay out all the I mean, it's very nice. Screws. It'll be fun once mm -hmm. we get it put together. I just did not understand how much assembly there was required. But it wasn't like super difficult to assemble. No, it, it was, was just. Oh, I, just I chose tedious. to do it on the floor. Yeah, which that we're was just not like a good laying idea. down on the floor. That was a dumb idea. It's where we had space, though. been up to that we built uh some like shelves for our friend's cat to yeah. like walk back and forth on top of to get away from their dog so uh that was cool we did that we did the install that's pretty much done um what else do we do we built uh same oh, friend yeah, that, same friend we thing. built this here i'll show you we built this little uh he's got an old airplane part from a crash that he found and he wanted a cool way to mount it with a picture of the airplane so a little art project, yeah. so that's almost done. I've just got to tie it down to the board with some hose clamps. All right, can we do something? Can we get a college degree for people knowing what stickers to put on what things so the stickers are easily removable. I understand it's probably cheaper to go with the crappy glue, but it is a nightmare. I can't tell you how many hours of my life have been wasted scraping crappy stickers off of components I needed no sticker or sticker residue on. Can we get like a degree or something for that and everybody just hires one of those guys? I mean, come on, I'm, a, I'm trying to be a job creator here. I'd pay for that. I know. <sighs> Retirement oh, plaque. yeah, we did another retirement plaque. Mm -hmm. That's something that Jenny finds at work that we do those pretty often. Yeah. So um, that was a nice, nice little payday. 
It's nice once you've built up a reputation for yourself, like the jobs start to come to you. Yeah. And then you just use like maybe 50% of your sales skills to like close the deal and get a good price on it. But but people already know they're, pro I mean, they're going to do it. There's no reason they back out because I've already purchased from you before. They already have seen your work. And so if you do a good job with your sales, sales, if you do a good job with your sales, the work starts to come to you. Yeah. And then what you start doing is you start saying, oh man, you know, I'm really strapped. I don't have a lot of time in the schedule because you don't. Yeah. And you can start raising your prices and saying, you know, I, I can do it. If can, you really need it done. I can do it for a thousand, but yeah. you know, it's supply and demand, supply and demand. Once you've built a brand for yourself, this is exactly what Apple did. I mean, not saying that we're Apple yet, but oh, like, we are the Apple. We are going to be the Apple of woodworking. <laughs> in our little, in our little town. Right. Oh we are the gosh. Apple of woodworking. <laughs> <laughs> we're probably the Amazon in our little town. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're gonna get cracking on this. Uh, what are we making today? A coffee, coffee table. Coffee table. We're making a coffee table for another client out of ours. Out so of oak. Out of oak. That'll be fun. This will be a nice build. Yeah. So we're doing some traditional woodworking on yeah, it, and using some hardwoods. And this will be this will be a fun little project. Yep. All right. Hey. So um, here's where we are. I'll just get you done up. Okay. So here's where we are with the X carve. Um, it's in pretty good shape. It was a lot of assembly, but uh, yeah, it's all fully assembled. We just haven't, we haven't connected any of the wires to the controller and I haven't done any software things. I haven't really done much of anything, to be honest. I've just put it together. I hope that there's not a whole lot left. Um, and then we can kind of start our first projects. We've got a couple of uh, friends that want some stuff like engraved and some personalized stuff. The uh, pool table cover that I made just a few weeks ago, he wants us to engrave his uh, fraternity's logo in it. So I'll be able to do that as well. Just excited to get my feet wet with the uh, CNC. I just know that this is one of those tools that once I get a handle on, on what's going down, man, it's going to be crazy. I, also, Jenny is in charge of pretty much all things CNC. That's going to be really her realm. So hopefully you'll see more of her as she does like text layout. She's learning Illustrator right now and how to convert that back and forth between whatever Xcarve software is, is called, I forget at the moment. But anyway, we're super excited. It should be done within the week. Just got to wrap up this video and a coffee table and make a few more sales and then I'll just have a bunch of free time I can work on the, uh, the X-Carve. So that's where we're at right now. What did you eat? A kale apple smoothie. Oh, <laughs> your breath smells. <laughs> All right, so the business tip this week is, um, yeah, talk to the decision maker. We just closed a deal this week and we were talking to, it was a husband and wife, uh, yeah, yeah. and we were talking to the wife and they wanted a really cool project. We can't wait to share with you what it is, but we found out about halfway through talking to her that it wasn't really her that was making the decision. We sold her on it, which was great, but she really wasn't the person that had the authority to pull the trigger on it. Her husband was kind of in charge of the budget on this project and um, it like we spent all this time trying to sell her and then she was the wrong person to talk mm -hmm. to. So and I know this is something that a lot of salespeople talk to, but make sure you're talking to the right person because sometimes, you know, and I'm like my dad deals with this a lot with his business and somebody will say, oh, that sounds great. Let me go home and talk to my husband or let me go talk to my wife about it. And then you never hear from him again. And if you've done woodworking sales for any amount of time, I'm sure sure you've heard that before and, and you've had a sale fall through because they went home and they talked to their husband or wife about it and just kind of fell through. So a couple tips on that, like number one, if, if you're not talking to the decision maker, just treat them like they are because sometimes you can get them to make the decision or they just need some confidence. Another way to do it is sell them on it so much that you ask, you then ask, this is like a Grant Cardone thing, but you ask them, hey, how would you justify this to your husband? When you ask your wife tonight that you know, hey honey, like, can we spend this much money on it? How are you gonna get them to justify it? And kind of get them to sell it to their spouse for you. That way, by the time you hop on the phone call or something like that, right, you, they've already sold it to the other person for you. So you can try to like manage it that way. There's a thousand different ways to manage this, but just make sure you know that you're talking to the person that can actually make the decision. And if not, get them on the phone. Say, hey, is your husband or wife there? Can they hop on the phone really quick? Hey, can we sit down for coffee with you and your husband so we get, you know, we get, we make a table that everybody's going to be happy with because you both got to live with it, right? So, or like if you're trying to sell something to kids, if you can get the kids excited about it and sit the kids down and talk to them, um, you'll get the parents on board really fast because if the kid's excited about whatever you're going to be building them, the parents will be willing to drop the money on whatever it is they want uh, a lot of the time. So even if it's 
sitting down and talking with a six-year-old about something you're building for their room. Yeah, you want to do get, it. You want to get a parent to open their wallets, get their kids on board with the idea. Something they want, yeah. So, yeah, help them design it, help them pick colors, help them pick, I don't know. I mean, you got to be careful with, like, you can't put sports teams and stuff like that if you don't have a license to sell it commercially. But, like, yeah. if you could do a butterfly or, like, some, some like non-specific cartoon character or something like that. If you've got a friend that's really good at artwork, like we've got a good friend that she'd, she'd be willing to make some artwork for us if we ever had a toy box or something. They could paint like a jungle scene or something mm -hmm. on that. Of course, then you just sub that out to your friend. Then your friend gets business and they, you know, start to snowball some business relationships there doing that. Yep. It's a great idea. If you want to learn how to do this as a business and actually start to make some money with your hobby, we have programs available. There's a link in the description. You can read all about them. We've got a new uh, combo pack with our program, so you want to check that out. You can get two for one deal. Uh, go ahead and check that out in the links below. It's a lot of our advice from YouTube, except gone into way more detail, way slower. We talk, we break it down for you with the numbers and actual examples. It's really, really good. There's sales pitch down there in the description if you're interested in more information about those. So far, you guys have absolutely loved them. I, the responses we've been getting from some of the programs are just amazing. We can't believe how much we're actually helping some of you out. Hit the like button. It really helps us out a lot. It's absolutely free to you and it just helps other people see our content on YouTube. That's the only way that YouTube knows whether it was a good video or not. If you like this video, watch a couple more, see if you like us. And if so, we'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button so that we could see you every single week as we put out more video content to help you make more money as a business. All right, that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you so much. I'm getting dizzy, so I'm gonna stop.